good on God. Focus our mind on Him. Amen. God, we thank you uh, that we're gathered here today in your name. God, that we can be family. God, that you love us. God, and I love that you love us because, God, you speak to us. God, you breathe on us. God, you're with us. You move towards us. And so, Father, Lord, we thank you today that we gathered here not only to celebrate you, Father, not only to see each other and encourage one another, but, God, we gathered to hear from you. Father, I pray that that's exactly what happens, Father, that we hear your voice today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, last week was a, a fun time talking about power, talking about, uh, I, I kind of coined the, the sermon, uh, Beta Christianity. So uh, there's more. Basically, if you missed last week, if you didn't, you know, last week we didn't uh, have the video recorded all the way, so if you missed any of it, just know there's more. Amen. That God has more for you, he has more power for us to operate in, for us to live in, for us to see operated around us. And he has more freedom for us. That the, the words that we read in scripture are not old. They haven't lost their power. They haven't lost their meaning. If Jesus said it, he wants it for us. Um, and so we talked, we talked about power. We talked about seeing God's miracles and power demonstrated through our lives. But also that he wants it for us. So if we, we went into getting, getting serious a little bit, right? Last week, got a little serious. We said, hey, if there... If we've wired a whole house, and we turn on the switch in the house, and lights don't come on, most of the time, we end up saying, oh, I'll just become nocturnal. I'll just live in the dark. It'll be okay. And we forget that we actually have to examine the wires and find out, hey, what went wrong? But sometimes we get too comfortable in the dark, like Samson did. He got too comfortable with his compromises, and his hair got cut, and uh, he didn't even know the power had left him. And we believe, uh, I believe firmly that the Word of God is true today, and that it's an operation today in our lives. And so if He said it, we've got it. So if He said there's miracles that He wants us to do, there's miracles He wants us to do. Amen. If He said that there's freedom for us to have, then there's freedom for us to have. Amen. And so we're, we as a church are going to go through a journey this year. I hope you guys are ready to go with us. And we're going to talk about deliverance over the next couple weeks. We're going to talk yeah. about prayer leading up to Easter. And then after Easter, we're going to talk about strongholds. And we together are going to receive what God has for us. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do an encounter retreat. I want that as a future announcement, something to put on your, your calendar, put on your finger. We're going to be putting uh, put on an encounter retreat. Which that's, a, that's a retreat where we get in and we find out where's our wiring wrong. What, what's happening? Is there some unforgiveness in our life? Is there some bitterness? Is there some hatred? Is there some things in our life that is stopping us from receiving all the freedom that God has for us? And it's called encounter retreat because we encounter God and we come out of it free. Right. We come out of it different. So um, it's going to be in March. I think it's going to be the third weekend in March, but we'll get you the dates here shortly so you guys can say yes. Uh, if you need to take off work, take off work. If you need to find babysitters, find babysitters. Whatever it needs to be. So we can encounter God, get some freedom. Amen. Amen. Today, uh, title is going to be called, or uh, named, uh, "Bring the Freedom." Bring the freedom, bring the power. And so, uh, like I mentioned, we're going to go. This is going to be start. And some of you maybe you've been in church for a little while, so you, you're going to be like, "Yes and Amen" to some of these things. And some of you is going to be new, and all of it is going to be good. Uh, so I, I promise you that. Yeah. So I, I mentioned last week the, the question, was it possible that the power of God has left us and we don't even know it? Uh, this week it is, is it possible that our house is out of order because we failed to realize that we are not God? Is the house out of order because we failed to realize that we are not God? Uh, I know myself, I tend to think uh, that my life is in order, that I, that I know how to do things. You know, when I'm, when I'm at work, when I'm in my workplace, I feel pretty comfortable. I'm like, all right, this is, this is good. If somebody comes to me, I, I pretty much feel like I, I have things in order. I, I look at my life and my, my whole life, and I'm like, all right, I have things in order. I'm, I'm having a good time. But uh, I have a really hard time in those moments when things are going all right, or I think they, everything's in order when somebody comes to me with correction. Anybody else? I don't know if I'm the only one in this, in this whole place this morning. But somebody comes to me with a, another opinion or another way of doing things. I said, hey, hey, Andrew, this is actually what you're doing. It needs to be changed a little bit. And I don't know about you, but my first time, my first experience with that is usually the cringe. He's like, 
or or, or, or uh, anybody love to give a defense? Well, this is why, you know, this is this way, or this is why I, I'm doing it this way, and I, I have my, my reasonings for everything. And, and sometimes it's hard to receive correction. In 2 Timothy, though, I, I get reminded of this, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, it says this, that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Now I know uh, we have a few people, uh, a few people, and we've encouraged the church that this would be a year that we read through the Bible. So we, I, I know, we, I even overheard this morning some people were asking, "Hey, I need, I need that piece of paper again so I can <laughs> get all those scriptures." So we'll get a whole bunch of them printed so we have them. But the reason why we need to be in the Word of God, that we need to be reading through the Word of God, that we need to be digesting it, eating it, even if sometimes it's like dry cereal, and I just gotta. Or is it down? I need to get some of it. Why? Because it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, and righteousness. Our goal in, in, in walking with Christ and walking with Christ is not that we be a better self. I, I like to be me, and I think, like I said, I, I'm pretty comfortable with the way I am, but, but it isn't to make me a better me. It's actually to make me and to mold me into who Christ is. Amen. And we're going to walk through this. If we're talking about uh, power and talking about freedom, uh, we've got to realize that God is trying to, through His Word and through His Spirit and through these wonderful messages on Sunday morning, through our gatherings on uh, during the week time, whenever we're here, He's molding us and He's trying to make us right, to make us look like Him. Yep. So that we'd be thoroughly equipped for everything in life. And if we're going to be thoroughly equipped and we're going to look like him, then i got to decrease a little bit. i gotta, I got to, I got to decrease so he can increase my life. Sometimes these words, anybody, uh, you're reading the word and you just got to stop because something slaps you in the face. You know, you're reading it and he's like, whack! Proverbs 12, 1. <laughs> Proverbs 12, so the a good practice, I love the fact of reading through all of Scripture. That's a good practice. Another good practice, we've got Proverbs. Proverbs, there's 31 chapters in Proverbs. So if you ever just need some encouragement, need some, okay, God, I need something to, 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 to read, to encourage me, to lift me up, or, or to correct me, uh, or to rebuke me, or to train me in some righteousness, read us a read Proverbs today. It's really good. Proverbs 12, 1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. I like to stop right there. That's good. I, that encourages me. I love the word of God because not only does it rebuke and correct, so sometimes those are harsher words, but it also encourages me. It's like, yeah, it leads me on, it leads me forward, and kind of entices me to go on. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. I'm like, okay, all right. I, I, there's a little bit of rebuke, but then it's a little encouraging, right? I, I love knowledge. I, I can learn to love correction. And then the next part says, whoever hates correction is stupid. <laughs> So turn to your neighbor, tell him, don't be stupid. <laughs> Scripture's really practical like this. I love it. It's so good. So whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. I mean, I want to be that. I, I, I need that to change my life. That when somebody comes to me with a correction, with a rebuke, or with a, hey, Andrew, you need to straighten this out in your life. Man, I, I want to love that discipline. I want to love that correction. Because whoever loves Discipline loves knowledge. Like I said, I, I want to be a lifelong learner. And it requires some humility. humility. I want to love knowledge. I want to love to receive from God and from others so that I can be like Him. Whoever hates it, it's stupid. That's just plain English. I love it. Put that on a t-shirt. Don't be stupid. Capital City Church. <laughs> The problem is sometimes in this, in this scripture, and maybe even you, when you, I, I'm guilty of this too. Sometimes I come to a, a message, or I'm reading the word, or I, I read through a devotional, and I'm like, man, this would be really good for my neighbor. Anybody? Yeah. And I, I wish I was in a sermon, oh man, and you think it, you're, you're saying to yourself, man, it would have really good if they, they missed this Sunday. This is the Sunday they need to be here. They could have heard something good for them. We love to point out the bad in others. And forget to do a self-examination. Mm -hmm. We say, God, what are you speaking to me? I got really guilty of this, especially after Bible college, because we, we listen to so many sermons, 
Every day we're in chapel. I was a preaching major, so we would listen to sermons in class and um, chapel, and on Sundays and on Wednesday night and the Bible study. And so it, got, it, it became really easy for me to think, oh, I could preach this a little better. I could make this point a little different here. Or, or hey, man, if this person was here, and I was like, oh, man, if I, said, if I preach that message in this setting, and I was forgiven to say, God, what are you speaking yeah. to me? God always wants to encourage us. His Holy Spirit is always speaking. It doesn't, he doesn't shut up. He doesn't stop speaking. He's always speaking. It's whether we're willing or we have the opportunity to listen and say, all right, God, how do you want to rewire me? God, how are you showing me that I can be more like you? God, I want us to be a church that loves your correction, that loves your discipline, that loves your knowledge. So I can get to the point where I'm like David in Psalms 23, where he say, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And I, it, it brings me comfort, it brings me peace to know, God, that you're on my side. That Holy Spirit, you're leading me. That you're teaching me. God, it, it comforts me. It makes me at home. Psalms 23, 4. Rod and your staff, comfort me. God, may we be a church that, that loves to hear your voice. In Luke chapter 5, verse 32, Jesus makes a statement. He was, uh, there are some religious leaders, some people that they thought they had everything in order. Uh, they, they came to him and, and he was hanging out with some sinners and some unbelievers. And they were drinking and they were partying and they were uh, doing things. And, and Jesus was right there with he was in the midst of this. He wasn't right there with them. He wasn't joining in. But he was right there with them in the midst of that. And the religious leaders, the people that thought they had everything in order, they were looking at him and they said, Why are you doing why are you out there with all these people? Don't you know who they are? And this is what Jesus replied to them in Luke 5, 32. He says this, I said, I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Jesus can't call the righteous to repentance because they can't hear the call. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need to realize we're not like Christ. We don't have everything in order, and that's okay. That's actually the, the exact place that God wants us to be in, to realize that we're not God. And when we get to that place, then it can actually work in us and through us. But unfortunately, most of us, and myself included at times, we find ourselves in a place where it's like, not everything's okay, I'm kind of comfortable where things are at. <coughs> Jesus can't call the righteous to repentance because they can't hear him. If we're in this boat, if we're in this boat that we think everything's okay, that we've got things, that, that we are already righteous, we're already like Christ, we look like him, we feel like him, we touch like him, we act like him, then this sermon isn't going to be of any use to us. But if you're in a place where you begin to realize, and I hope that through the message that you will realize that we are not like him, that he wants us to be like him, and that he is actually working on our behalf to mold us into his image so that we would look like him, act like him, feel like him, receive all that he has for us, this is going to be a benefit for us. So in the words of Solomon, don't be stupid, let's get, get our bearings right, and let's move forward. We have not obtained the perfection of Jesus' character. Or 2 Corinthians says, we have not received the perfection of his glory. Let's look here, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. It says this. It says, now the Lord is the Spirit. And when the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. Wow. <coughs> A lot of amen. Do we, let's believe that this morning. So then this is, that there is, there's a truth in his word that there is freedom. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Well, I've got good news for us that the Spirit of the Lord is in each, each and every one of us. Yes. Right. He's here in his feeling. He's here in his lead. So what does that mean? What is that tr That's the truth that we're going to chase after. He said, man, Andrew, Pastor Andrew, last week while you were talking, I was reminded of this pit I'm in. I'm reminded of how I wiring. I'm reminded how I've become comfortable with the world. I've been reminded of those things, and I'm aware of them now. I have them on the forefront of my mind. Well, remember, when you when they have it on the forefront of your mind, and when you, you know that you're in a pit, you know that your wiring's off, you know things are wrong in your life, remember this verse. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 
And remember, I mentioned, and we're going to say it again, that it, there's not something wrong with the Word. The Word has not become less powerful, it has not become untrue. Usually, it's what's wrong with us. I mentioned that, remember I said, said the analogy, sometimes we're with, working with our phones, and our phones are messing up, or our computers are messing up. And, and, and usually we have an IT guy come in and he presses one button or something and, and, and they, they're really good at not saying this, but what they would really love to say is it's not the computer, it's actually the operator, right? So it is the same thing in scripture. The scripture is true, it works. Amen. If it's not working in your life, then you gotta then you gotta do some self imagination. You gotta figure out, okay, why is it not working? What's wrong with my heart? Where is my mind? Where is my will? Where is my emotions at that is causing this freedom to not take place in my life? Let's move forward to verse 18. It says this. And we all, all of us, we all, y'all, everyone, everybody's included in this. Everybody who has bow their heart before the Lord and said, yes, Jesus, you are Lord of my life. All of us who have the Spirit of God, this is what's happening. Who with unveiled faces, that means we were once blinded to who God is, now that we've come to Him, our, our eyes have been opened, we can see Him, we contemplate the Lord's glory. We contemplate how wonderful God is. We think about it, wow, God, you're amazing. God, wow, that's so awesome. God, you are so holy. Right? Our eyes now see Him. Before, we maybe were in distance. Maybe we were annoyed by, the, by Him. Maybe we didn't think of how great He was. But now, all of a sudden, our eyes are open. Wow, God. So with unveiled faces, we contemplate the Lord's glory or the Lord's character. And we are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Paul Menner, I said, we have not obtained the perfection of the character of God. But no, as we journey, we're actually being molded more and more into His image, more and more, this, this word says, His glory, into his, into his fullness by the Spirit. So the Spirit has been given to us so that day by day, moment by moment, we should be loving His correction, so that He molds us more and more, more and more, until we look like Him. The goal in our Christian walk is not to look like us. We're not God. We have to realize we're not who we're supposed to be. What? We're not who we're supposed to be. Because I don't know about you, but I can examine my life for just a few seconds and find out I'm not like God. I don't have it all together. And I hope you think that you don't have it all together. You might be thinking, man, Patch is all messed up. But we are. But God is working towards us to make us more and more into his image. The upgrade, if we talk about beta Christianity was that, the upgrade is Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's what it's supposed to look like. Perfect peace. Power. Ever increasing looking like him. Our house is out of order because we think everything is okay. We become comfortable with it. <coughs> but we don't even know that God is offering us the life of Jesus. We think what we got and how we acted and how we made our life for ourselves is good. We're comfortable with it. And God is here offering to us the life of Jesus. All of his power, all of his authority, the freedom, the... And we say, ah, you know what? I kind of like everything the way it is. And we don't even know what we're missing. <coughs> so last week we looked at Hebrews chapter 5 and we're going to go there again. Because if the question is there is more, if the question is I'm not like God, then how do we get from the place that we're at to the place that he wants us to be? One, right? We've got a, a, the Proverbs, we've got to love correction. We've got to love discipline. We've got to love his voice. That God speak to me every morning. Hopefully we start waking up and say, God, speak to me. Today I want to hear your voice. I want to know who you are. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, it, it points to some elementary, elementary teachings of the Word of God, right? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5. Let's go there. Looking at verse 11. It says this, For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, 
Remember he talked about the mature. You guys should be moving on. You should be growing up. You should be having some, some good food. But solid food is for the mature. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by the constant practice to distinguish good from evil. How do we become more like God? It's really easy. And sometimes really hard. Maybe we've made it hard. We have to become good at distinguishing good from evil. So I teach, I teach my little kid how to distinguish what's good from evil. I, I've, done, I've done above that. No, I mean, some guys. We need to be able to distinguish what's good from evil. So how do we do this, Pastor? I want to talk about this. We need to ask the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit's job is to reveal to us, is to guide us into all truth and to convict us of sin and righteousness. Mm -hmm. I had a really fun time on Friday night. We had our mission of community in, in, over, and, and we were talking together, and somebody had invited their friend over, and they were going to go out after, and they came to Bible study, but after they, were going to, uh, after they went to Bible study, they were going to go out and have some fun with some friends. And, and this individual, they asked me, they said, you need to tell them what's wrong with what they're doing. Tell them what's right. Tell them how to behave. Tell them what's going on and what's right. And, and I just stopped for a second. It was funny because she had invited this person to join us that night. I'm like, really interesting night. <laughs> the first time here, you're telling her, tell her everything she's done is wrong. Like, those are her exact words. And I said, you know what? She, I said, you know what? I'm not going to do that. And she looked at me all puzzled, like, you're a pastor. You need it. You know what's right. You know what you need to tell her. Why don't you want to tell her? I said, because I can't be with her 24 7. It's no use. I could, I could, I said, every Sunday we could get up here, we could tell you a do and do not do the list, you know? We could make it, we could write out every step and every plan. I mean, I have some things that I know you guys shouldn't be doing. I think you know some things you shouldn't be doing too, right? Mm -hmm. But you know who that teacher is? Holy Spirit. I'm not going to be with you in the middle of the night. I'm not going to be with you when you're doing your tasks. I'm not going to be doing with you when you're, you know, you're at work. I can't be there every second of the day. Well, what I can do is I can encourage you to know the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is going to guide us in all truth, and He's going to convict us of sin and righteousness. So that night, as, as a friend left, I said, I said this to her. I said, I, you know what's wrong and what's right. I said, but tonight, when you're out, go ahead and pray. Ask the Holy Spirit. What I'm doing, honoring Jesus. I said, that's all you're going to be praying. What I'm doing, honoring Jesus. Does what I'm doing look like Jesus. And the Holy Spirit's going to tell you, and it's going to be way more powerful than me spending an hour <laughs> telling you how to date and how to be with people and how to interact with guys at the bar. I mean, like it. Just ask the Holy Spirit. And this is true for us this morning. In every phase of our walk with Jesus, the Holy Spirit is with us, and He's going to train us in, in, in right and what's wrong. And if we want to become like Hebrews 5 says, if we want to get away from the basics, we want to get away from the melt, you know what we have to become good at? Distinguishing between what's good and what's evil. And we're going to start looking more and more like Christ. How we respond to people, how we do our life, how we interact with people, how we uh, interact with the sense in our... Everything boils down to us determining, through the Holy Spirit, what's good and what's evil. And some of us have become too comfortable with what we're doing, so we need that Holy Spirit voice because, he, 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 like I said at the beginning, we become okay with where we're at. We're like, this is comfortable, I'm good. Uh, we need the input of the Holy Spirit. We need the input of, of brothers and sisters in our life so that when we're off and doing our own thing and, and a brother or sister comes to us and corrects us, we need to love that. We need to enjoy that. We need to enjoy the words when all of a sudden we're reading it and it gets a little convicting. It slaps us in the face and we need to say, Yes, Holy Spirit, I love your voice. Amen. Amen. Love the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, that you care enough about me Amen. that in my everyday life you speak. You're always speaking. God, open my ears so I can hear you. I don't want to be too comfortable with what I'm doing and how my life is going that I forget to hear your voice. We need to grow up. The foundation of receiving the power, the foundation of growing up, 
is repentance. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 6, we're, uh, next verse down, Hebrews chapter 6, it says this, Let us leave the elementary doctrines of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. So he, he was wanting people to move on from it. He said, he said hey, come on, we're, we're past it, let's go back. But hey, it's okay to be reminded of it this morning. That the foundational step in becoming more like Christ, the foundational step of looking more like Him, is this. Repent. In order to get, our uh, to get our house in order, we must realize we are not God, and that starts with repentance. So I was just saying, yes, God, I, I'm not like you. Repentance is this. It's not, stop doing what you're doing. <laughs> Stop it! Though sometimes I want to say, stop it! <laughs> Don't go there! Yeah. Repentance is this. It's a change of mind. Mm -hmm. It's a change of our beliefs. I was once doing this, and now I realize, oh, well, now I believe, God, your way is better than my way. God, I realize your holiness is, is better than my holy. God, I want you. I want your decrees. I want your laws. I want them. I'm hungry for them. I, I love, like, like David said, I love your rod and your staff. God, I, I want it. I need it. It comforts me to know that I can be more like you. It's a change of mind. And then all of a sudden we realize when we change our mind about things, well, God, your way is, is better than my way. And our life begins to look different. Man, I'm convinced this thing that I used to chase after, the, the way that I used to interact with people, the way I used to cut corners, the way I used to do the thing, hey, it's not the way of the Lord. God, change my heart. So but another awesome prayer. Uh, Holy Spirit, speak to me today. Another thing, change my heart. Change my belief. Help me to believe that you are better than the way I am. Because as we as we talk about uh, as we continue these conversations about deliverance and freedom and, and strongholds, what we're going to learn as a church that we are body, soul, and, and spirit. And when we come to Christ, our spirit salvation happens. There's a positive in the spirit. Our spirit is made alive. I come, I come to Christ today. It says that. Uh, like we read earlier, that everyone does have the Spirit. The Spirit of God is in us. We, it, when we come to Him before, He's there. He's made alive. And, what, and it talks about that we were once dead and we were now made alive. It's our spirit that now awakened to the things of God and to the ways of God. But how many know sometimes in our soul, in our mind, will, and emotions, we're not quite saved yet? Right? That's what we talk about. Our desires are a little bit off. Our, our, our minds, the way we thought about things, the way we uh, did things in our life, our, our emotions, how we feel about things. That's why sometimes I talk to people and, and I say, hey, you shouldn't be, should be doing this. And they say, well, I like it. I enjoy it. Their emotions are still a little off. They, they haven't been saved yet. And God, so in our walk with God, the spirit man has been made alive, and our spirit now, and his spirit, works inside of us to work through us so that his spirit works all the way through our mind, will, emotion, so that our body, our, what we do with our lives, now looks different. Mm -hmm. I need, I don't know about you, but I need the spirit of God to become alive to teach me how that my whole life, my whole body, will look like Jesus. Amen. God, renew my mind with your word. God, I don't think like you do. God, I want vengeance. Man, I... Learning, okay, okay. Little father now. <laughs> little father moment this week. My little boy is out on the playground and a kid made fun of him and there's a little pushing and shoving that went on. And then later in the day, he was at the lunch table. He took his lunch bag and he hit the other person. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> You've been holding that, mm -hmm. holding that grudge against that person all day long, and he saw the opportunity. He took it. Yeah. Vengeance. <laughs> Sometimes we don't look, we don't think like God. Mm -hmm. Right? We want to repay evil that's done to us. I introduced him to the verse that Jesus said to turn the other cheek. He said, what? 
If we want the power on, if we want the fullness, if we want the, the upgrade in our life, we must realize that we're not God and that He wants to put Himself in us. We humble ourselves and He will lift us up. Let's turn to James 4 today as we close. James 4, chapter 10. Or it's James 4, verse 10. Pastor, you love this verse. You always bring it. Yeah, I love this verse because it's so true. And it's instrumental. It's, 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 it's marquee. It's like pinnacle. It's like the moment that we start changing our lives to look more like we get all that has for us. It's right here. James chapter 4. And we're going we're gonna to start with verse 6. I uh, said 10. That's the one we're going to get at, but we'll start with verse 6. James chapter 4, verse 6, it says this. But he who gives more grace, that is what the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord. And what? He'll lift you up. At the beginning of, of the message this morning, I proposed a question. Is it possible our house is out of order because we fail to realize we are not God? When we repent, the basic foundation of how we can repent is to know that we're not like Him, is to humble ourselves before Him. And one, it does come with, with weeping. It comes with mourning. There, there's some sadness when all of a sudden I realize I've messed up. Yeah, God, I, I'm not like you. There should be some, some true sorrow, some true repentance. God, I, I want to be like you. I, I missed the mark. I humble myself before you. I realize I'm all before you. God, you are greater than what I have gone through. Yeah, you're greater than, the, the, you're, you're better, your ways are better than the, the things that I've become comfortable with. But repentance always ends with a, a uplifting. It always comes with a refreshing. It always comes with Him drawing near to us. It always comes with us getting more of Him. More of the good stuff. Amen. More of the cream filling. More of what God has Weird look. It's a Twinkie, it's a Twinkie commercial. I'm sorry. I went there in the middle of a serious moment. Anybody, anybody just like, like Twinkies and like the, good, the, the commercial, the good stuff? Anyway, I'm sorry. Repentance, <laughs> humbling ourselves before Him, complicating more of Him. I don't know about you. But I want more of him. I want him in me. I want him through me. I want all that he got for me. Right? Well, let what we start here this morning. And our prayer is God, change my mind. God, I need to be more like you. God, transform me. God, I want all that, that you are. God, I want that 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I want to go from glory to glory. I want to look at your face and I want to see it. I don't want to become more and more like you. God, I must first realize I'm not you. I don't know if that's you this morning. You realize that maybe for the first time or maybe you're reminded you're not like him this morning. And you need to take a little time in prayer and say, yeah, God, God, renew that in me. God, God, work that through me. But I, I'm not like you. God, I, I need to be like you. I want to be more like you. That's you this morning. You say, yeah, Andrew, thank you for the reminder. Yeah, I, I need to look more like God. I, I need to humble myself before him. And we're going to take time this morning and pray and say, God, work that in me. Work that mindset in me that God, you're greater and that I need to look like you. Work that mindset in me that I, 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 can, I can pursue after you. Work that mindset in me that, that I, I, I need you and all of you. Work that mindset in me that, God, I love your correction. God, you can even quote, quote the Proverbs 12, once you, God, I, I don't want to be stupid. But God, I want to love your correction. I want to love your voice. All the little kids are in here now. 
pastor said they have to say, Lord. Mm-hmm. Let's pray this morning. Lord. I'm going to invite, yeah. invite us one. We're going to pray. I want to pray over you in our seats that we receive from God this new mindset that I love your voice. I love your correction. I need to be more like you. And then secondly, we want to respond to that prayer. And this morning, you want to just spend some time with the altar saying, yes, God, renew my mind. Yes, God, change my mind that I would love your voice, Holy Spirit. I would love that you want to change me to make me look like you. We want to spend some time with the altar. Let me pray over you, and then we can respond. God, I thank you right now for your voice. God, I thank you for the, the avenues, the way that you're challenging us. And, and God, and you want us to be in order. God, you want our house to be in order. God, you want us to be full of your power. You want us to receive the freedom that you uh, declare that we have. So, Father, Lord, I, we know and we understand this morning that, God, it comes with a changing of our mind. Lord, a desire to hear your voice, a desire to hear your correction, a, a desire, the Father, to repent, to change our mind so that we may look more like you, so that we may receive more of your fullness. So, Father, Lord, I pray right now for everyone gathered today, Father, Lord, every member of our church. Father, Lord, I pray that our heart and our minds would change to know and to be convinced that we're not like you. And that your spirit is speaking to us so that we may become like you. Father, I pray that we would be people that love your voice. That love your conviction. That find your voice and your conviction. Just like David said, he he, he loved and he enjoyed. He found comfort in your rod and your staff. God, I pray that we as a church, we would love your voice. We would find comfort in your speaking to us and you're challenging us, and you're encouraging us. Father, I pray now, God, that true repentance would take place. Father, a true change of mind would take place in our hearts. Father, Lord, we would see ourselves become more and more of God, as we respond, do your work inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. So if that's you this morning, say, yeah, Andrew, I need a change of heart. I need a change of mind. Yeah, I, there's some things I need to come before God and, and ask God to take away from me so that I can be replaced with how he thinks about things. I want you to come and we can spend some time praying at the altar, praying and asking God. The, the, he, the James chapter said uh, that we can weep and we can wail and we can ask for forgiveness. We can humble ourselves before him. And that he will come to us. He will refresh us. He will renew us. He will give us life. And that's right now the opportunity. That's what we're grabbing hold of. That's what we're receiving today. As we repent, we receive life. So right now, why don't we respond? Come forward. Let's pray.